So one more pointer for the startups. Uh, Adama is here in the front row. Adama, raise your iPad <laughs> or hand. Uh, he will have an iPad with the timer so you can keep track uh, of the time. Uh, it's three minutes your pitch, and after three, three minutes we stop you. Then there's three minutes for questions from uh, the jury or from anyone else from the audience. After three minutes, you go off the stage, the next startup comes on. And we're going to be really strict here, so just three minutes. We know all of you practice, practiced, so you know, be on time. Okay, so I think we're ready. Claudia, you ready? Yeah? So let's just begin. This is the pointer here as well. So Claudia from Blue Blue, first pitch. So learning a second language, a problem I share sorry, with millions of people spending a lot of money. How do you learn a language? I'm Italian and I'm trying to learn Lithuanian. So first you go to a classic approach like studying the grammar. So they teach you the rules, long list of words. And you know, you might understand the teacher, but when you go out in the reality, you don't understand anything. So I thought maybe the internet can help me. So I go online and what they offer is to connect me with a native. Have you ever tried? I mean, it's just so boring for them and so challenging for me that we just give up immediately. So this is how it looks. You study, you learn a lot of words, but you don't understand anything in the reality. So your confidence goes down. But there are some successful people. How do they learn? They learn through more natural approaches. For example, watching movies, listening to music, or traveling and talking with people. I mean, I'm Italian and my English is, at least I believe it's, it's fairly good. And I didn't learn through the grammar. I learned by exposing myself to real content. So wouldn't it be great to build a system where you get exposed to the real language, it's fun, you learn while having fun, and you feel confident all the time. That's what we built with Blue Blue. On Blue Blue, we have content from the internet. During a short tutorial of a few minutes, we just ask any user to click on the words they know or they don't know. So we're able to gather their knowledge of the language, and then we combine the content they can already understand. And when we match their knowledge with their interest, now we can find videos like this, that there's, it's fun to watch and they can already understand. We also control the amount of challenge so we can find text where there's only few amount of words they don't know. Very easy to understand because they're in a very precise context. We also make them talk, but we don't connect them with the natives. We connect them with other students and they match the same interest, same knowledge. It's like this room where most of the people that speak English as a second, second language and they share the same interest for business and startups. This is our team. We are angel funded. We're a strong team working full time from our office in Vilnius. And we have all the skills to build this product. We have a beta version that has been online a couple of weeks. It's in 25 languages. You can try it works. And we're currently developing and optimizing it. What we found out is that this system, it's very, it's easily adaptable to any language. And on our active users, we have an 8% conversion to paid users. And we get a lot of testimonials of people saying, this is really fun and addictive. So we're here today because we believe this is a product that can change the world. And what we're looking for is first advising and expertise because we, you know, we think we're smart, but not that smart. To, to, we're going global very fast and we're really looking for advising. And later this year, we're going to go for a second round of investment. And we will need it to scale fast because we really want to disrupt this market and change the life of millions of people that are trying to learn languages and now wasting their time and money. So this is Blue Blue, the smart and fun way to learn languages. Thank you very much. Okay, do we have any questions from the audience, from the jury? From the jury first, I suppose. a week do they play with Blue Blue? They have an average usage of like uh, eight minutes a day. Our like, uh, this is the average, and we have active users that spend more time. And, uh, well, we got like 30 minutes even like using it because we get real content like YouTube videos, we got interview, we got real articles from the internet. And uh, if they're, now we are not beginner friendly, friendly we're intermediate friendly, and uh, it works pretty well. So how many competing uh, businesses you have found uh, in this language learning area? The competitors. But yeah. well, there's many competitors, but, but what they do, what we found out, they use the traditional approach of classes to just make it a bit more multimedia. 
like no one is actually using this real content and provide them at your level and increasing like gently your uh, like uh, experience so uh, there's many many people like teaching languages but no one is doing it like this way so what are your thoughts on distribution on distribution yeah i know you're close i'm better now but i mean what are your thoughts on how to, how to actually push it out but now we have like these 25 languages and we have like uh, the interface we're translating in many languages. We have Italian, French, Finnish, Lithuanian and English. And how do we want to spend? Now we have like we haven't pushed the marketing because we like we don't uh, we don't think we have a product ready like to to be used. But, you know, if magazine comes, they want to interview us, we give interview and then some user come and they they start to move on. But the way we want to distribute this is, you know, we know where our users are. Like they're foreigners living in a foreign country and basically hanging out in, in like circle where English is the language. But they're trying to learn the local language, but they, they, they don't have success in that. So there's a lot of forums online of expat or trying to learn Lithuanian where basically people talk in English in there. So we will start from there. Then, you know, kind of everybody's our customer. So when we find a the customer, then they will start sharing on Facebook and that's how we will like get our customer. But this is the advice we're looking for. You know, how do we can how can we market efficiently this? Have you taken the chance to look at customer acquisition to see actually how much it costs you to bring a user to use your product? Since there is so many other competitors, you you have sort of a, a product that goes to in the end of the day to teach people languages, but you just chose a different way. So you're competing against other platforms that actually are bringing other users that have sort of a other customer acquisition. So I think that's a really important thing yeah, for you the, I mean, we have to understand if you have a business. Yes, like what's, what's the advantage we have is that we don't create the content. So we can have a Lithuanian course online without spending any money creating the content because the content is online. So we just have our algorithm basically dealing with that. Our cost, cost is in terms of like a server and you know how much did that cost? That, that's the cost we have because to bring users. Well, we haven't done again the system. You know, we still want to do usability. We want to make sure when we make a campaign with like we don't have millions now, so our budget. You know, we're very careful spending. We want to make sure that if you come to our like homepage, you need to finish the tutorial 90%. That's when we will go outwards, eventually, you know, and see if it's convenient for us or not. Okay. Thank you, Claudio. Thank you. Now I'd like to invite on stage B on desk. We create a new way to use the network. You can very easy to log into our website. You come to a Facebook or Google account and get your personal desk. We have our app box. In app box, you can see different applications. All applications have a page where you can see all information about these apps. You can write feedback. And you can add your applications to your desk and begin to work. You open one, two, three, four, five applications in the browser tops. Beyond desk, work in any device. You open your MacBook, close, open your Android telephone, and you can see that all your application is open and you begin work. Beyond desk, save all your positions and all your applications. 
You can have your personal desk, uh, kids desk, you can see all the children applications, airport desk, and university desk. This is Stanford University desk. Uh, when we develop this desk, we see that Stanford University is really huge. They have many websites, but they don't have one place where students can see all information about this university. Our team consists for two people. Armand Dunin has six years experience in web development, and me, Alona, have five years experience in marketing and sales. And we have three excellent world mentors. Uh, John Normack, founder Yebex, Slav Voskresensky, founder uh, Invisible CRM, and Paola Sayan, one of the uh, senior in Google Ventures. And uh, now all our applications and our desk is free for users, but in the future, developer and company can develop paid applications for our app box, and we have 30% from these operations. By similar mechanism, Apple Store and Google Play. And we need uh, $200,000. We need money to develop and marketing and staff. That's all. Thank you. I have time. Questions? Yeah. What made you come up with the idea? Um, we have some idea because we have some problems. I am my partner, he's a developer, and uh, he developed products. Uh, he, uh, and we want to develop these products because we have some problems and we understand that people have problems too. Because I have many devices, I have many applications, but I don't have one place where all my applications work in my uh, Apple device, Android device, and this is one place for all your devices. And this is I have a question. So, um, so this looks a little bit lightweight for an investor like us. Uh, is there something clever behind the scenes here that I'm not seeing? Um, you know, in terms of functionality, I think a lot of the stuff you can do basically on OS level and so on. So what do you do like behind the scenes? Is there anything, let's say, that you built to understand what people are actually using and then you use that information to kind of build the, the dashboard? Was uh, it is it, is it more like a bookmark thing or is there some kind of user behavior thing analyzing you know what people do and how they're browsing and then you create the desktop mm -hmm. based on that yeah uh, i would say that our projects were young only four months ago we developed our projects and now we are tested we have uh, new users um, uh, they uh, tested our projects and why write what they want what they change uh, we develop uh, some desk. Uh, I not see all our desk because we uh, yesterday we developed a new desk and uh, we want that our project is help people uh, because you can have not one personal desk. Uh, maybe you want kids desk or in the future we want that beyond desk work in the hotels, in the streets, in the restaurants, in the university. Because, uh, for example, the company because. Uh, People work, uh, they have one place for all their informations. For example, you developed uh, company applications, uh, and these applications be in Beyond Desk, in Personal Desk, and people come and see all these information. So, yeah. uh, maybe to follow up a little bit, so, so it's like a personal portal or front page in a way. But I suppose the question is that is there anything uh, beyond that? So do you have some sort of uh, automation, how to build that based on like uh, my user behavior or something like that? Uh, we have our app box and our developer he developed applications because it's a website, uh, web applications and uh, you can add only applications in our app box. Maybe Okay. Hello, Mike from uh, TechCrunch okay. here. Um, listen, uh, you look smart, your team looks smart. This is a really bad idea. Just give up and come up with something else. <laughs> uh, this is a, this is, what you've got here is a launcher. You've got a software, you've got a browser to a bunch of web apps, basically. And I think this is a feature, not a, this is a, feature, not a company. Uh, it's, not, it's not really a company. I can't see this going anywhere at all. So I think you guys have got some great talent. Give it up, come up with a new idea. That's my feedback. Thank you, it's, it's your feedback. <laughs> Thank you for the last question.
Thank you. Be on desk. <laughs> Mike, straightforward as always. Okay, I'd like to invite on stage transfer go. <laughs> Good afternoon. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Domantas and I'm CEO and co-founder at TransferGo. TransferGo is the fastest growing online account-to-account -account remittance startup in Europe today. We at TransferGo have a vision. We want to enable micro to small international money remittance and enable immigrants across the world to spend less money for their international money transfers and make it real time. So, we have a big problem. Banks are charging a lot for very slow remittance, and we have solved that in a great, great solution. So, why are we the fastest growing? We have turned over more than 500,000 euros in aggregate turnover. We have achieved and sustained a 75% month-to-month growth rate in both transactions and revenue. And it's not just quantity, it's quality as well. We have a 37% retention rate. It means that people love our service and they recommend it to our friend. Uh, so we also achieved revenue and quite a lot of it. And with our current projections, we will break even by the end of this year. So this all translates in a 10% market grab in the UK to Lithuania formal, formal remittance market. But all of these figures don't tell the full story because the most outstanding figure of all we have achieved all of that in 108 days. So, how did we do this? Very simple. We, talk, we took on a big problem for many people and we offered a user-friendly solution with a great pricing model and even better customer service. We have a balanced uh, founding team with great talent on board. We have technology, business development, finance and design. We have the lot. In addition, we have world-class investors and advisors. One of them, Greg Kidd, also advisor at Square and Twitter, was presenting just on this stage a couple of hours ago. We have great seed investors, Practica, who are partially funded by European Investment Fund, and we're working with Oric Law Firm, who some of you may know, on our next Series A investment. So, in 108 days, we've proved the market in Lithuania, expanded to Poland. Next 257 days, we will improve the market in Poland and expand from the UK to the entire Eurozone. And by the end of the year, we'll open our first transatlantic funnel. And today we have a big announcement. We're starting our growth stage number two, and we are opening our first ever Euro funnel. That's UK, Germany. Uh, so what are we looking for? We're looking for three things. We're looking for world-class advisors to, uh, to reinforce our advisory board. We're looking for marketing partnerships to grow even quicker, especially in Poland. And we're looking to start Series A conversations with world-class investors because uh, we want world-class people to help us realize our vision. Thank you very much. Three and if minutes. you have any questions. It looks like uh, currently you didn't have a lot of competition. How are you going to compete when the new entrance to the market will be all like you'll enter destinations with a higher competition than sure. UK or Lithuania? Sure. Sure. From the very first day when we were looking at this company, we weren't looking so much at the Lithuanian market, we were looking at the European market from ground up. And we know companies like TransferWise, Currency Fair, uh, Asimo, and we have a very competitive product in comparison to their. Uh, one of our key competitive uh, advantages is that we do next business day guarantee. And they don't, do, they don't do that because they work through other service providers, we do it directly. Um, there is also various, various differences, for example, we uh, translate our website to every single language. So we have now Polish side, we have a German side, and we're entering the market of this the huge uh, immigrant market. We don't necessarily know English, but they want to save money on their transfers. For example, transfer-wise, they're all in English and they're aiming at a different market, which we think is scarce and uh, it will run out sooner or later. So uh, we think we have a pretty competitive offering on the site. You haven't touched on how you're different, neither in technology or in distribution channel or uh, in acquisition strategy. So can you tell sure. me a bit sure. how you're different? 
sector. Uh, fundamentally, we are a remittance company. So our fundamentals are very similar to other uh, competitors. However, where we differentiate is in distribution. And we, what, a few examples. We have achieved a 9% conversion rate in Google alone. Uh, our marketing, how much we put in our marketing and the conversion rates are incredible. And the way we do it is we, we, we go local. So we go to the Lithuanian market. Now we're doing the same in Poland and we are delivering, getting the same results. Also, we are doing our referral campaigns, which basically bring, uh, bring us some people. You get them, you give them money for, for bringing that. And we also have other interesting ideas how actually do it. Uh, I would be happy to discuss it in more detail. Uh, but this is our core, core, uh, core competitive advantage, to say that. Well, there's another sort of area of competition, uh, like mobile money. Uh, there's a number of companies who are pushing that concept where you just actually send money via, via mobile device in India, in Pakistan, in, in Africa. So how do you see those initiatives as a competitor? Um, uh, in a few months, we'll open our mobile version, completely integrated, so people will be able to do international transfers with our, uh, with our service more easily than, easy, easily than now. I think there is... Uh, there's sort of a perception that there are a lot of companies, a lot of them are doing good PR, but very few of them do good metrics. And that our metrics so far, and what we see in Poland already, they surpass any of our competitors. And all the theme that we have in this conference is we are the fastest, and we're the fastest in both sending the money and getting there. And in the market, when there's really not so much that you can protect in a sense, it's all how you get there first, I think our, our team and, and the way that we approach things and the way that we actually uh, sort of focus on, on these core markets is going to be differentiating us in a, in, a, in a year to come and two years to come. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Transfer go. And now on stage, Advice Wallet, please. Hi, everybody. My name is Anna. And there is Stas. We are founders of Advice Wallet. It allows people to get real cash for recommended businesses they like. We all know that the biggest concern in any type of business is getting customers, especially for small and medium sized businesses. Just think about it 73 million local businesses in the world face it, and there is no effective solution yet. Yes, there are services that promise you to bring in and retain customers. But in fact, they just promise, like daily deal sites, location-based services like check-ins, and loyalty program services. After hard work and many tests, we created a perfect solution, both for businesses and customers. Advice Wallet, it allows people to share special offers and get real cash for recommended businesses they like. So, businesses register online, set up all the conditions at their wish. They create an offer and choose the amount of cash rewards for recommenders. That's it, they just print out special flyer from our website. For example, Susan liked a cafe and she wants to share this great experience with her friends. She sees the flyer, scans code there, and recommends it using our website and mobile application. The message appears on her Facebook wall and also on our mobile app. Friends who come by her recommendation get special offers. And she gets real cash for every new customer attracted by her. So, Advice Wallet system motivates people to recommend their friends to come and it, uh, moreover, it gives Susan more special offers that motivate her to come back. That's how customer acquisition and retention engine works. And we created it because we do care about businesses and their customers. We take from 99 cents for attracted customers and companies pay only for result. We launched a trial version in Ukraine three months ago. And working only three months, we've got 250 companies registered and 600 users who made more than one recommendation. And our turnover was more than $100,000. We just getting started and we went through the acceleration program 
and uh, we want to go global now, starting from the United States. We will grow fast using Salesforce, online marketing, and we have great partnership opportunity uh, to uh, scale it faster. Oh, sorry. So uh, we have a fast-moving team, and our CEO. Three minutes are over. Sorry. Years experience. Last sentence. Sorry. Three minutes are over. Sorry. So thank you. We are looking for two hundred fifty thousand uh, dollars. Thank you for your attention. Questions? This is Stasio. He will uh, answer questions for me. Hi. Oh, it's getting hot Hello. in here. Uh, hi. <laughs> Over here. Yeah, yeah. Right, you've yeah. got some questions. Um, first up, um, why uh, is it, I mean, you're really, this is kind of like you're trying to do a kind of four square thing here, right? Correct? No, uh, no it is not. We just, uh, uh, four square is more for uh, people to check in. And Advice Wallet is a uh, service for friends' recommendations. So you can recommend a place and uh, you get uh, just real cash on a constant basis. The, thing with the, the, uh, the real problem is how are you going to get scale? Are you going to kind of get, you know, employ a call center in India to ring up hundreds of thousands of businesses to uh, get them to sign up? How are you going to get scale? How are you going to get distribution? So, uh, first of all, our strategy is focused on merchant acquisition. Because in our service, when we have merchants, they uh, attract their customers to use the service. That you're relying on small businesses to find you randomly on the internet because they're Googling offers and coupons on the internet someday and they find you and they go, shit, this is fucking amazing. I've got to sign up to this shit. You ask about merchants or uh, people? What, 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 what's, what I find really weird is why don't people come up with an idea where, if you've, if you've got a, like, an awesome app, right? Why don't you come up with an idea where the crowd themselves can bid and like, create the offer themselves? All of a sudden, your distribution is effectively s organized and crowdsourced by ordinary people using your app. They create their own offer, not relying on the bloody small businesses who barely know how to use a fucking browser. Um, you know, why don't, we why don't you, you know, flip the model around? Have you thought about that? Uh Sorry, I didn't uh, really... Yeah. Like, flip it around. Get ordinary people to ask for the offers themselves on the app. Yeah, uh, ordinary people to make their offers? Yeah, have you heard of these? Ah, this thing called ordinary people who yeah, use yeah, applications? Yeah, we thought about it, yes. Yeah. Uh, we just want to start with uh, our strategy, yeah. and then maybe we uh, want, to, uh, want to start small and then uh, add new features. So okay, I'm hogging the mic. Somebody else ask a question. Okay. <laughs> You're going after uh, a notoriously difficult space. You're coming up with some very big names that have failed to generate a real impact. Where do you think your biggest obstacles lie? Uh, our biggest obstacles are to uh, show, to, like, to pursue aggressive model and to be the first on the market. Because if we show some great results, a lot of companies can just clone this uh, feature. It's the first obstacle. Yeah, but my question is, a lot of people have tried, no one has succeeded. I'm, I'm not so afraid that you're succeeding and that that's your risk. Where are your obstacles to getting that early success? Uh, it's just... Uh, you throw our flyers. Because we might wait, we might wait. Obstacles. Uh, I'm so, bad English. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, so uh, we think that uh, we want to start it tested from uh, in Berkeley. We have a pretty uh, good uh, target audience there, students, and then we we can just uh, have all the tests done, got positive feedback. If uh, this service, uh, uh, we just done uh, some couple of tests with some merchants, and uh, uh, then uh, we will go uh, global, start from from San Francisco and other cities. So our obstacles is just to validate the model in the U.S. and then... Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And now, on stage, at target.me. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Hello, everyone. A short introduction about how e-commerce business works. A clicker, yeah, I need this one. 
If you run an e-shop or any other type of e-commerce website, you probably noticed that 98% of your visitors simply doesn't convert. They don't buy, they don't register, they simply leave. Uh, what a waste. With retargeting, we catch those people and show your banner as a reminder with a gift coupon, free shipping offer, anything that would bring them back and encourage them to buy from you. Our dynamic ads, dynamically made ads are the most effective way of display advertising right now. These are up to 10 times more effective than any traditional display advertising. And retargeting is getting huge in the world. Uh, companies, retargeting companies from the Bay Area are the fastest growing IT companies in the United States. And while those guys are focusing on the home market and Western Europe, our main concern is to become number one retargeting platform in Central and Eastern Europe, the region which is currently not too crowded with retargeting players. And we know how to do this. My name is Eymann Tasabalauskas. I am the co-founder of Target Me, with Andrus as our CTO and David as responsible for business development. We've been building advertising platforms and ad networks that are currently the largest ones in Baltic states. It was until now. From here, let's cut the crap and start talking numbers. We are operating as a closed beta system for four months. We already have 40 clients, the largest ones, the best known clients in Lithuania. We are seeing a 50% revenue increase every month on average. And we are al already quite well established in Lithuania, starting campaigns in Latvia, Estonia and Ukraine. Our clients that sign up for a one month test campaign, they all become our permanent clients. All of them are using a target me right now. And it may sound as another great success story, but actually if we look at the chart, our market chart, you can see Lithuania in it. Because Lithuania, Latvia, Estonia, these markets are so small if you compare it with Russia. And this is our next goal, to enter those bigger markets. Poland, Russia, Turkey, because we know that a target me works fantastic. Now we need to go to these markets. So we need you investors, people who would like to join us in this journey, because someday we will conquer the world. And to make it more entertaining, I just added some random photos from the internet. <laughs> a target me, laser precise ad targeting. Thank you. Questions? Um, my, my question is, uh, accept, of, accept of deep knowledge, as you say, uh, regarding the markets. Yeah. What, what else do they have in uniqueness uh, in opposite of my things, for example? Well, uh, retargeting is nothing new in the world. And if we have my things, us and some other few players, it will be okay. The market is really big. The market is now it's 1 billion euros. It's growing by 20% every year. So there is enough room for everyone. And of course, we have our local focus. We are from this region. We know how to talk to everyone. And now what we do, we connect global ad exchanges and local ad markets. No one has this in this region. For example, in Lithuania, it's global networks like Google, AppNexus, and so on. And in Lithuania networks, AdNet, AdClick, soon to be Facebook, Skype, and so on. So this is one, uh, our uniqueness. So as you said, the, the retargeting is, not, is nothing new. So yeah. you're not inventing. In, in one way, I like the fact that you're going for a market that you know. But as, as you're not inventing anything and you basically have no barriers to entry, what makes other big players that are now focusing on the US market but have a lot of capital for just, they don't need to really come here. They can just you know yeah. start deploying their, their product and doing the same. Well, I must be honest. Um, now, they, this market is not interesting for them, but one day it will be. Our goal is to be quite big in this market when they will enter it. And it's one of our exit strategies to join uh, 
some market or maybe to, to, to join uh, some company uh, from United States or to buy them maybe, who knows. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, you know, I don't think this is a venture company per se. I think this is, you know, go ahead and build it, you know, hustle, don't, don't raise money, just do it, make a lot of money and then, you know, start something that can be venture backed if, if that's what you want. Well, uh, we are seeing revenue, we are growing, but to enter, for example, Russia, you need uh, to grow more fast than we are growing now. We, we, I, I would say we will have a break even point uh, in a month, if we will just live and work in this uh, region, in Lithuania, Latvia, and Estonia. But actually, as I said, it's like a sandbox. We test it, but we must go wider. Uh, yeah, I, I totally agree with the, the other judge. Uh, you, you shouldn't, there's no re real point. If you're going to break even in a month, you, you, you should just go and build this black damn thing as fast as possible. Go start um, making love to potential uh, acquirers. Uh, like uh, guys who want, uh, want to exit, uh, sorry, enter the market, you know, the uh, markets that you want to enter, you know, CE C e region, Russia, yeah. etc. Uh, you don't really need to, I mean, you, c you can pitch here for like PR and marketing and stuff and get journalists to write about you. But, but other than that, it's main, the, main, the main thing is to uh, just go and build the, the damn thing. And, uh, uh, you know, there's no point really in raising money if you're going to break month and an even. Just, just fucking get out there. It's a philosophical dilemma that we are fighting every day. Should we accept money or should we So that's we, just, we? that philosophical dilemma is basically going to kill you. <laughs> you know, if, no. you, if you can't decide, you need to make a decision extremely that's quickly. That's why I'm here, because we decided to go. We've, to just, decided, we, you, we've just decided, we just decided for you. <laughs> go and fucking build it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> So we're halfway through, uh, five pitches to go. I just want to show one Twitter here for the people who don't speak Lithuanian. The, the bottom one says, that mic is kicking everyone's ass. <laughs> it's a good, good feedback, I suppose, from Mike, or bad feedback, I don't know. Uh, okay, whoops. We have five more startups in the first batch, and right now I'd like to invite on stage Jungle Expert. There are two ways how you can buy advertising online. One way to go directly to the websites, communicate with the sales, uh, uh, sales teams and the managing sales. Uh, other option is you go to the middleman or the ad networks. Well, there are over 500 ad networks out there. The market is overcrowded. Uh, ad exchanges, real-time bidding, the things are going crazy. So there's barely the place for a new startup in that area. So therefore, we focus on the buy direct area. So if we look at the East Central Europe market and the split of the ad budgets, so it's approximately 85%. In fact, display ad sales uh, uh, volumes go to the direct ad sales. Why is that? Well, obviously there are multiple reasons, but the major two reasons are number one, websites make much more money from direct sales. Number two. Uh, ad buyers, in fact, love the way they have all transparency and full control of the process. Uh, the problem with direct sales, obviously, is it just involves too much hustle. I mean, it's an uh, enormous amount of communication with each and every website. So you have the data exchange, so you have the managing the campaigns, etc. Uh, Jungle Expert is direct sales platform for online advertising. Uh, we actually solve the communication, data, and booking uh, uh, areas of the, uh, of the direct sales. So obviously, this is the access to uh, websites, to their sales teams directly in one place um, from the platform. I've been in uh, online advertising for over eight years. I've worked for uh, several website sales teams. I've been in a media, in an international media agency. Uh, my partners are Cube Agency, who've done a lot of uh, programming system development and actually got some rewards internationally. Uh, this is how the platform looks. It, uh, we have over 100 uh, uh, users right now in the platform, uh, generating revenue in the business for over a year right now. Uh, the business model is that websites pay subscription uh, fee, which is monthly based, or they, the smaller websites pay 10% of incoming revenue. Uh, obviously, we were working on, uh, on, uh, 
on a scaling and on a product. So in the future, we see that for the large online publishers, we'll have a licensing and uh, ad serving fees. Uh, you think like this is like crazy simple. It's just no way something like that have not been done like 20 years ago and many, many times, right? Right, so but uh, actually exactly the same business model. There are only a few of the companies. One is in Russia, it's Azizi. Uh, and the other one is Byads.com in the United States. So there's a blue ocean situation in the Eastern Central Europe. Uh, Three minutes are over, sorry. Yeah, we're looking for funding. Questions? You're saying this would be the preferred m method for people to buy ads directly. If you look at your Russian and your American competitor, what percentage of direct ad purchases flow through them? Uh, actually, uh, this business model is not uh, uh, like uh, uh, mature. Let's put it like that. Uh, the companies, both of those, actually, the buy ads just got six million funding in the United States first round, so they are actually just getting the pace there. So, uh, potential is huge, but this is really the sort of new idea which was left behind because of the uh, hype of the real-time bidding and stuff. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> are you interested in your company? Well, I built it. Fantastic. Could you actually show a bit of passion and interest in your company? I mean, that was one of the most boring pitches I've ever heard, to be honest with you. And I, I, what I want to hear from the entrepreneurs is that they, they're on fucking fire. They want to go and kill people for the sake of their... The hey. <laughs> let's, let's, you know, let's hear a bit of fire, a bit of passion uh, from some of the entrepreneurs here. Because, I mean, this is a kind of a boring business, but... If you're interested in it, then you've got to show some damn interest. Because I'll tell you what, you're not going to get any, any damn backing from a VC or an investor or an angel if you don't sound interested in your own damn business. Any more questions? I suppose we're done with questions here. Thank you, Jungle Expert. Oh, sorry. Okay, four more to go, and now I'd like to invite on stage Kupo Ko. Hello everyone, my name is Gedrus. I am founder of Kupo Ko, smart email marketing tool for e-commerce. Uh, Kupo Ko analyzes behavioral history of existing e-shop customers, and according to preset rules, sends email, personalized email messages. Me, Jason. He recently started online business. Even his business is relatively new, his customer base grows quite fast. And here is recently acquired customers. Rose, Kate, and Sarah. Yes, it's hamster. We, they are very popular these days. But Jason faces some issues. With indirect email marketing, he can't really satisfy all his clients. Let me explain. Jason just got new shipment of dog food and he sends newsletter to all his clients. Unfortunately, it doesn't work for all of them. Rose, uh, like 75% of people, uh, abandons her basket and because she got, gets distracted, distracted and Kate and her cat can't even believe you offered to buy a dog food for her. And best case scenario, like 60% of people, she will delete your email. Worst case scenario, she will mark you as a spammer. And Sarah is so busy, she opens her email once or twice a week, so your offer is lost in her inbox. But Jason is a smart guy, much like me. Uh, he finds possible solutions to this problem. First one is to, uh, to hire a developer, but these days developers are quite expensive. Another one, uh, another one uh, is to go with third-party tool, but Jason is not a technical guy, and he can't do integration by himself, so he chooses Kupacom. And with Kupaka comes great things. Now, Rose gets her reminder about abandoned basket and she finishes transaction. Kate uh, gets different offer, but for her this new offer is more relevant. 
Sarah gets her email on the most probable time when she will read it. Currently, we are in MVP stage. Uh, we are testing with live shops around Lithuania. Uh, Jason is only one of 1.5 million uh, stores around the world, and we believe we can have a big bite of this market by offering really low prices. All is done by our team. Uh, myself, I'm a developer of 10 years' experience. Jurga is a product developer and marketer with 10 years', ex 10 years experience as well. And Paul is our second developer. Best, best part, only for 200,000 euros you can be part of all this. We will spend all your money on growing team, marketing, IT infrastructure, and thank you. Questions? Well, uh, first of all, I think this is another one of those kind of lightweight ideas that's really scary to look at for an investor. Uh, one comment on your kind of what you will do with any investor's money is to grow a team. Uh, don't do that. You know, get traction, show that this is actually relevant to someone and go from there. I mean, right now, uh, very difficult to, to invest. Uh, sorry, I forgot to mention uh, we will finish our product as well with this money. Product is good. <laughs> so, yeah, keep building products. Thank you. I think what you have here right now is basically just an idea that there is no real validation. You're talking about 1.5, similar to JSON, but you can actually try and test the idea of what you're doing from a customer acquisition standpoint to see if you can actually create value to the people that you're trying to create value to. And that's was, uh, what I was lacking here in the pits. You're saying, I have an idea of basically retargeting and personalizing email to in the end of the day, sort of small, medium businesses that cannot really touch that, how much is it going to cost them? Is the cost really going to value? After this email, is it going to bring them money? Because I think if you don't answer this question, you're not even validated to ask for funding at this point. This is a test that you should guys try to do by yourself. Uh, well, we actually testing on live shops, some functionalities, some basic fun functionalities. And uh, functionalities which is missing, I definitely know it's uh, necessary to some shops because tr uh, for three years I was Magento developer, it's most popular pl uh, e-commerce platform. And uh, almost every my, every my client asked to do something about something I just told you, uh, like bespoke development. Uh, you are also referring to behavior, history. So how do you get the history when you just started? Well. Uh, how we will work, we will give uh, our clients some JavaScript snippets. We will have a very good documentation how to use it. Uh, best use cases. He will install a JavaScript. Also, uh, we will connect it him through API. And we will basically will track uh, what kind of products uh, this person is looking. Is it uh, outdoor stuff like dog food or is it cat food? So you can uh, like segment them these two customers. Maybe you should partner with somebody who has that data already, because then you could actually get access to that history. Uh, it's very hard because uh, like we are, our integration from JavaScript side will be very similar to Google Analytics. We'll just copy paste JavaScript. But Google Analytics doesn't provide like exact name and email of that person. And there is, as I showed, uh, there is some tools. But it's quite hard to do that because all tools who use JavaScript, they work for software as a service uh, applications. So they are not working for e-commerce. And from, from app to e-commerce website, it's quite big difference. Okay. Don't, don't try to find the new customers in Lithuania. I would say go to the bigger market. Because you're definitely going to find the first customers in Lithuania asking just a few friends to yeah. try your product. Exactly. And that's going to send the wrong message. Uh, basically, we are, Lithuania is our testing field. <laughs> but, uh, uh, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Don't test this in Lithuania. Test in different market. Yeah. If you'll find your customers in other market where you don't know yep. some people, then, then probably it's going to be some sign that it could work. Thank you. Uh, OK, thank you. Kupoko. <laughs> and now on stage, Survey Blender. Hi, my name is uh, Raymond Elfring, and I'm. Hi, 
want to talk to you about online surveys. Um, but first let me ask you something. Who of you has ever participated in one of those online hotel customer satisfaction surveys? And who of you has really tried to read everything carefully and answered each question with equal consideration? Yeah, that's what I thought. Well, I must admit that I'm among a select group of people that actually likes these surveys. But I also like airline food and, and, uh, and splatter movies, so I'm not your average public. <laughs> no. Let's face it, online surveys are boring and unattractive. They look like weak. They look like weak copies of paper surveys, and they are designed as web pages from the 90s. Designers or uh, uh, researchers aren't happy either. They face low, uh, high response <coughs> rate and low response quality. Now we can do this better. Um, the everyone loves a good story. The human brain digests visual information much more easily than trolling through lines of written text. And if the story is created so that it that it's, is in line with your logic instead of that of the researcher, you will be naturally inclined to supply um, uh, qualitative answers. Now, um, um, this Survey Blender can do this. Survey Blender will give you the platform that allows researchers to think outside the box and create appealing and attractive surveys that get high response quality and lower dropout rates. We, uh, Survey Blender will bring quality to quantitative research. Um, now we are talking about the 2.2 billion dollar market in 2012 in the US with a 9% growth rate. And um, this market is largely stuck in the 90s. It's time to steer things up. We have a team of seven people that have uh, expertise in uh, building innovative web solutions and uh, social media platforms. And we are looking for investors and advisors that will help us build up from our early stage development through our first growth phase. And if you're interested in this, please come and talk to me. Thank you very much. Questions? I like the fact that this is, uh, provides you with much better looking surveys, but I guess one of the hard things in Surveyland is signing up a lot of customers. To me, it's not clear that if this uh, thing seems to work, why not every survey company could just copy your model, start applying this to their existing customer base? Yeah, that's a very valid point. Um, of course, I'm, I'm, I'm really surprised that not all survey, all those big survey companies out there already have solutions like this. The only, person, the only ones that have solutions are platforms that have been built by research companies themselves and they create each survey individually. We are trying to uh, push to the market of do-it-yourself do survey makers. So, and we are starting to, we are entering the market by targeting uh, small medium enterprise, shop owners, hotels that have a need for build-it-yourself solutions, but they, they cannot really get it through SurveyMonkey or one of the other, other competitors. Uh, just one question, your team. You have seven people, but still you own 100% of the company. So you don't have partners you trust, or you just want to keep everything in your own hands? Uh, no, we, 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 we started up from, uh, this started up from an idea we have been developing over the years. We have an existing company that builds uh, custom-based, custom solutions for, for companies. Um, so we have started to develop this ourselves, and, and now we ran into it, it, it got more and more serious, and now we are running it out as a separate startup to really gain the momentum it needs. This is, uh, doesn't seem like a particularly defensible idea. Do you have any uh, intellectual property or any kind of, is there any kind of barriers that uh, a competitor could, uh, could, can't uh, go up against you? No. It's, uh most of the stuff behind this is, is, is very hard to get IPR on. There are some things that we're working on uh, based on using uh, open and linked data and stuff like that, but that's really, you know, for... How would you describe what you do in one 
very short sentence. Uh, we create... Um, <laughs> fail. Sorry. You just fail. Oh, the word, um, the word didn't go. Okay, so you, you, I, do you know what I think? I would call this a Pinterest for surveys. There you go. Take it. Use it. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you. Survey Blender. Okay, so we have two startups to go, and the first one from them is Dragdis. Hello. Wow, that's loud. Uh, hello, my name is Thomas, and I'm co-founder and CEO of Dragdis, which is the simplest tool to collect the web. Um, every day, millions of people go online and they discover images, videos, uh, text, websites, and they collect them with a thought, oh, I'm going to use this in the future. Uh, but later, they can't find anything they need. And that happens because there is no fast way to collect information without making a mess. Directly solves this problem, and now we believe that now we can say there was no fast way. So here's how Directus works. On any website on the internet, uh, all you have to do to collect an, any item, all you have to do is just drag, drag it, and then a, a sidebar with your preset folders appears, and you just drop the item to a folder you want to save. And that's it, it's done, saved in two seconds. You can save videos, you can save texts, you can collect uh, links as well. Then, find things you collected really fast on drags.com. Uh, we launched private beta, uh, in the middle of February this year, and we already have 8,000 users. Uh, half of them are active on a weekly basis, and they already dragged 100,000 item, items to drag this. People are really getting excited about drag this, and this table shows perfectly why. Our competitors asked to do five times more actions to collect something without making a mess. We calculated this, that there's about 18 million people in USA and Europe that would love to use Ragdis today. And if we combine this with our business model, which is $5 per month for extra features, we get a company that generates $240 million uh, of revenue per year. Of course, potential is much, much bigger. Uh, we are acquiring our first users by doing PR, and we have a great worldwide marketing stunt idea that would hopefully bring us to uh, 500,000 uh, uh, 500, signups. From there on, we're gonna build a referral system and we will make sure that you could easily share the items that you collected. Drag this is built by three people and we as a team are very balanced. So I'm doing, I'm doing business and marketing, uh, Carlos in the middle is doing design and Og is doing programming. And we are raising $500,000 uh, to scale drag this a thousand times. And for the ending, I just want to say, next time you discover something online, all you have to do to collect it is drag and drop. Thank you. So uh, why do you need money? Uh, we need to scale this really crazy, really fast. And how so will you do that with money? Hiring and marketing, yeah. And so how will you use that money? We're going to hire some developers. We need developers uh, for mobile app. We need developers on the uh, website itself. And we need, uh, we need to spend money on marketing because we, need to, we want to go open this summer and to scale drag this really, really uh, wide. I actually might be getting a bit of a hard on now. Um, this is a, this is like, a, a, even though it looks very simple and a little bit lightweight, and I agree with the previous speaker that uh, you probably don't need to raise money at this stage. You just need to get, you know, ma focus on the product. Yep. Um, I can see uh, there is a real user need out there for uh, cloud bookmarking. The weird thing about bookmarks is they're so, so it's kind of stupid and old fashioned, but um, there, there is this sort of strange work because there's so many services now. We use Pinterest, Facebook. I mean, if you could integrate with Facebook, I think that would be amazing um, because it's such a closed ecosystem. Uh, so that, I think I'm, you know, I'm getting a little bit wet. Uh, I think I'm a little bit more excited. 
Uh, what I want to see, though, is some traction, some great user numbers out of this. You know, you, I was checking you out on the line, and you just, you've got a little bit of press so far. Not given TechCrunch the exclusive, which I'm very disappointed by, uh, of course. But uh, I'm getting interested. I'm getting interested. So good luck, guys. Thanks. I have, uh, I have just a short comment. Uh, in, in, to me, it's, you know, it's the best tool for, for sex sites, you know, to collect the pictures. So that's a measure of success, isn't it? Because um, if somebody starts to collect those kind of things, it's a, it's a good, great tool, like some lot of Pinterest and stuff. Not just success, but success. That's what I. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I, I hear you're pitching this as easier and less clicks than Pinterest. Yep. But there's like 150 million people on Pinterest who built their personal notebooks and have their followers, etc. Do you think people will switch? Um, we don't want our to drag this to succeed. We don't need people to switch from Evernote or from Pinterest. For one Pinterest use, user, there's about 10 Dragnus users. Because this is a very uh, fundamental tool, like bookmarking. Bookmarking is in the browser itself. So this is a very, um, I mean, fundamental service. It's a tool for you, so, drag, I mean, Pinterest is a social network. You, 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 you share stuff that interests you with your friends. This is a tool for you, like your mobile phone, like your the browser or something like that. So we don't need to, to Pinterest to fail for us to succeed. So that's my answer. OK, thank you. Drag this. <laughs> and last one, the first batch, Gray Cardinal Partners. When I was a little boy, I was dreaming about um, different virtual worlds, about fairy tales, knights, and of course, Star Wars. Now, uh, I'm a grown-up and I still dream about all these things and trying to realize it. Hello and welcome. Uh, now, I will shortly, uh, I will show you a, a small video, please. As you all know, innovative technologies are really expensive and only rich people, uh, big companies for big money, are, uh, can assess it and can buy it. And ordinary people cannot uh, afford it. That's why we want to change the game rules. Well, um, be sure that it's the next augmented reality products world. It's uh, like an app store, just better. Uh, We want to come in and create an augmented reality products world, but on the whole, it's an augmented reality uh, products uh, platform, uh, which is dedicated to consumers and consumers and uh, developers. Both sides win. Uh, yes, uh, now our business model is really simple. It's like, uh, Free demo versions uh, to attract the customers, then a fully functioning uh, paid product and a commission. Try to count what's better: 100,000 for 100 bucks or one, 10, 10 million for 10 bucks. And now we have a MVP, and we want to uh, we want to expand our product range. And just imagine augmented reality CV and in order to impress your potential employer or uh, uh, real estate agent who shows you a 3D model of your future uh, home. Now, uh, our goal is to have a better version in three months, then uh, uh, marketplace running in six months, 
and about 20,000 20, uh, users worldwide in 12 months. And uh, we're looking for an investor who believes, who has specific... Three minutes are over, sorry. Okay. Questions? Anyone? Uh, my question is, what, what do you actually do? Who is asking? Here. Me. Yeah. Actually, it's, uh, it's a platform, augmented reality platform. It's dedicated uh, to consumer and to developer. It's like an app store, as the app store model. Consumers go to, the, uh, to our created website where, we, where they can create personalized things like visit cards, CVs, like architects can upload their own personalized uh, uh, 3D house models. And developers make templates, templates, and also benefit by uploading those templates to the platform. So you uh, you give that as a service. So you engineer those models, or is it the user who creates the content themselves? Actually, uh, the free developers develop the uh, the te templates, and our developers do that as well. So. Uh, which are our, our, our developers and freelancers does uh, full, fulfills uh, the whole platform with uh, templates and users can use it. One comment is that it's just impossible to get it out of your presentation, so you just need to concentrate on the presentation. Yeah, better. I know. Thank you. From the likes of Layer and Blipper, we've seen that in a presentation, augmented reality looks very sexy. Yeah. And in real world, it's really hard to kind of get people to use it and enjoy it and stick with it. Um, why did you start with business cards and how do you think you can overcome this, this hurdle? Actually, it's uh, the MVP and we believe we can, um, can use this uh, just to show people what is it and how it can be uh, implemented in businesses because it's uh, it's up to the impression and it's uh, really uh, representative. Then uh, it's only the first product. Then uh, in, in, in some time we will uh, extend, expand our product range. So that's but the What do you one. think is a product that will, will find real adoption and that you go like, oh, I use it and I use it all the time? Actually, the business cards uh, is uh, one of my favorites from our uh, present uh, think uh, products because it's it, it has a lot of uh, capabilities you can uh, use it in business you can do some advertising because it's an additional communication businesses can do um, can show logos uh, actions promotion make and everything that you want in that visit card it's, it's really representative so um, do you have a Google Glass development kit or not not sure. It's a too technical question. No. So Google. Well, okay. So you need to you need to look at Google Glass, and then you need to go to California or, or wait until after Google I/O, and then get one of those dev kits, and then think about what you can do going forward, because I think that could provide some cool inspiration for what you're doing. Okay. Thanks. Um, so I think this is a um, a startup for which there is no real answer. There's. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I get the sense you don't really know what you're doing. Um, do, you feel, do you feel confident that you know what it is you actually do? In the product, yes. In the technology, yeah. the technical... We, 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 we up, down here, we don't feel confident that you actually, you know, you, you have a uh, product. Could you uh, ask uh, a specific question? <laughs> we, we, think it, we, we think it's a shit business. Um, we think it's a shit business... Uh, which is basically about to be taken over by brand new stuff like augmented reality and Google Glass, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Apple's going to bring out a product like this, no doubt. It's bringing, it's going to be coming up with new products. You guys, yeah, I think you're, you're, you're basically you're the startup that to 2000, 2011 uh, is calling and wants you back. Basically, is what I'm saying. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Great Cardinal Partners.